In this video, we're going to look at the performance of running Python in Excel. Uh, and this is going to be a, a pretty quick video, no pun intended. I'm Tony Roberts. I'm the founder of Pixel, which is a Python add-in for Microsoft Excel. Uh, and since about 2010, I've been helping financial institutions, hedge funds, banks, uh, and other large, large enterprise companies integrate their Python systems into Microsoft Excel. For this test, what I've decided to use is the Black-Scholes Option Pricer. Uh, this is a fairly well understood formula that a lot of uh, finance professionals use and it's kind of a nice use case because a lot of what people use Python and Excel for is doing uh, valuation modeling, risk modeling, that kind of stuff where they're calling analytics functions directly from Excel. I've set up a couple of workbooks. Uh, I've got this one which we'll look at to begin with uh, where I've got the, the inputs to my functions and then some space for the outputs. And I've got a bunch of random, uh, random inputs here. I got a second sheet with exactly the same uh, thing set up, and I use this to uh, to use Microsoft's Python and Excel feature uh, as well. First of all, I'm going to use the Pixel add-in just to get kind of like a benchmark, and then we'll see with the Python and Excel uh, see how much you know faster or slower that is. So first of all, to call these functions uh, in Excel, what I need to do with Pixel is add a decorator to tell the Pixel add-in that these are going to be exposed to Excel. So I'll do that now. So I say from pixel import Excel func. Add this Excel func decorator to both of these. Save this file, and then reload that Python module in Pixel. So that's all done. Now I've done that. I can just say equals bs call exactly the same way as a built-in Excel function. Pass it in sk like this. And we get the results, and then let's put the BS put in as well. There we go. And I just want to show you. Okay, so I've got a thousand calls here. So I'll drop that down here and drop this down here. You can see they've all calculated. I mean, it's, it's doing a thousand, but it's pretty much instantaneous. Uh, and I'm using. Uh, the fast Excel add-in, that's uh, Charles Williams' is, is add-in. Uh, if you're interested in profiling Excel stuff, then, then check that out. It's just Google fast Excel. Uh, and I'll do full recalculation. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So that took about 100 and, 140 milliseconds. So let's just put that there. So now let's do the same thing using Python and Excel in the second sheet. The Python and Excel uh, feature works slightly differently in that I can't just call uh, a Python function from the worksheet like that. Uh, I can't just import some code that I've written. You know, here I've just written, I've got it saved on my, my local drive. Uh, I can't import that into Excel here. What I have to do is actually copy and paste the code into Excel so that then it sends that code off to the Azure notebook uh, and, and runs it there. Uh, so let's do that now. So I'll copy that and I'll just put it in a cell here. I create a pi. Python cell, make this a bit bigger, copy this in here. I don't need the Excel func things here. And then Control Enter to enter this. So this then runs this bit of Python code. Uh, all of this Python stuff kind of exists in the same uh, global namespace uh, in this Excel workbook. So now I define these functions once in this cell, they'll be available to cells further down in the sheet. So I can use that to say, call this here. And I want to say, bs call, uh, oh, hang on, I don't know the, I'll just copy and paste it from here, that's easier. And I can't just pass arguments to this thing. What I have to do is, I'm gonna call this function, which I've already created. Uh, but I need to give it the arguments that I want to call it with. So that's quite straightforward. I just say s equals this, k equals this. And sigma. Okay, perfect. So let me do the same for the put. And now I've got this here. So that looks good. And let's just drop these down for a few, just to double check. 
and we can see the results are all are all matching up. So this all looks good. So I just go back and just fill this down uh, to see how long this takes, and the same one here. What I'm going to do, I think, is I'll just recalculate the whole thing, and then I'll go and get a cup of tea, and I'll come back and report how long it takes. So I just came back to see how it's doing. Uh, it's been going for about four minutes now. Uh, it's got down to here, but Excel has kind of completely frozen. Like it does move occasionally, uh, but it just keeps flashing this, you know, calculating 32 threads. So I give it a bit longer, uh, but we might have to give up and, and do a smaller, smaller test. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes now. Uh, I think it is still making progress because it does keep flashing this calculating thing, but the, the Excel window is just completely frozen. What I'm going to do is just kill Excel and we'll start again, we'll do a smaller test. I've set up a slightly smaller test now, just doing 10 rows. Uh, so this should be much faster and allow us to compare the two technologies. Uh, here I've got the, the Pixel 1 using the BS call and BS put functions we saw before. Uh, and I've also got the same that we saw before using Microsoft's Python and Excel solution. Uh, I'll time the Pixel 1 first. Uh, that's come out at just 13.29 uh, milliseconds. That seems quite fast. Let me try again. 29 milliseconds. 24 milliseconds. Okay, so, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 milliseconds. And I do the same with the uh, Python and Excel sheet. We'll see that the calculation comes back immediately, but these things don't actually get updated. They get little green uh, sort of clock things next to them. So when I do this, okay, 57 milliseconds, but then now they're ticking through updating as it goes there. And in order to time this, because the uh, you know, this feature isn't including that time that it takes for the Python calls to actually come back. What I've done is added a bit more code. So this cell here returns the, the current clock time. And then this cell here returns the current clock time. Because the functions run from left to right and top to bottom, what we can do is sample time here and time here and take the difference. And that tells us how long it took to calculate uh, these 10 rows. So in this case, it took uh, 6.56 seconds uh, versus 11 milliseconds. One other thing that I found interesting while I was doing this was uh, with the, the pixel version, because the functions are just Excel functions that then call the Python code, when I go and make changes to any of the inputs, uh, only the, the calculations that depend on those inputs get updated. So for example, if I take this row, uh, if I was just going to change this, then you could see these two rows updated. None of the other rows did. So it's really, really fast. Only what needs to be calculated gets calculated. With the uh, Python in Excel, the Microsoft version, however, if I go and change just this row here, what we'll see is that actually all of the Python cells have to be recalculated. So if you're using a lot of Python on your sheet, you have to be careful of that because each time you make any change to any input, you're potentially doing a lot of calculation, which could really slow things down. So I was going to leave it there for this video, but I've just been speaking to Charles Williams, who's the author of the Fast Excel add-in, and it's what I was using earlier to do that profiling. Uh, and we were talking about doing Python in Excel and how fast it was compared to other things and, and this kind of stuff. And he shared with me something that he had been looking at, just for fun, really. And what he showed me was using Python for Excel, basically taking an array of inputs as a data frame, two, two input arrays. So here we've got ID quantity and here we've got ID filter. And then joining those using pandas uh, and getting the result as a data frame. So what that looks like is I've got the code here. So DF1 uh, taking in this and then DF2 taking in this and then doing an inner join and returning a, a data frame. And what he was comparing that with was one of the fast Excel functions. And what I've done here is just added again the start and end time like we saw before, so we can see how long the Python version takes. But I've added an extra bit to his sheet, which is a pixel function. And the pixel function just looks like this. So exactly the same as the code that we're using in Excel. Uh, getting a data frame here, I'm passing it in as arguments rather than using that Excel thing. And joining them, but exactly the same code. Just, just copied and pasted. Uh, and then I'm calling that function here with the same inputs. Now what he found, these are his timings here, so 1.1 second for this fast Excel one, 
And if I do calc range, I should be able to replicate that fairly easily. So yeah, 1000 milliseconds, so 1.1 seconds seems about right. Uh, the Excel version, uh, if I just make a change to trigger something, then we'll see these are starting to calculate now. So it's now doing that join on the uh, Azure Cloud Platform. There, we've got the results, so that's 13 seconds. So that's a bit longer, he said 4.5 seconds and 7.1. Uh, maybe just try calculating that again. I guess the, the time of this does vary with network and stuff. Okay, there we go, so 3.5 seconds out of time. Maybe it's because I think uh, Excel will do some caching with arguments and stuff, so we'll go with that. Uh, and then the pixel version. Eight hundred milliseconds. When I did this a little while ago, uh, the pixel version was very slightly slower than the fast Excel version, about ten milliseconds slower or so. This time it's a little bit faster. Uh, but there we go. We can see the same sort of orders of magnitude, both like you know around the around the second sub second mark. Whereas the uh, the Python and Excel version using the Azure Cloud uh, is, is significantly slower. At the beginning of this video, I promised it was going to be just a, a quick video. Uh, it's ended up a little bit longer than I anticipated, so apologies for that, but I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. Uh, if you're working on anything where you want to bridge Python and Excel, then we at Pixel can, can help you, so please do get in contact, visit the website pixel.com, uh, or leave a comment below to get in touch. Thanks for watching.